welcome back. This is part two of our deep dive into Lori Vallodebo. Lori and Alex had a very different sibling relationship, and that's putting it mildly. That will be discussed in a future video, of course. About a year after the mysterious death of Alex Cox, Zulema was called back in by the Rexburg Police Department, who wanted to clarify a few things. Zulema believed she was there to talk about Alex and his death, but it soon became clear the detectives were much more interested in learning about Lori and Chad and the missing children, ultimately. A few interesting tidbits came out of this interview, and I wanted to share them with you. Buckle up, it gets crazy. I asked for a couple of minutes with him. They gave me, like, I don't know how long, but they gave me a few moments with him. And I remember coming out of the room and my son-in-law came. And I remember him saying to somebody who was there, um, we're going to get a lawyer right now, so speak to our lawyer. And then I remember leaving. That's, that's, but I don't remember whether, when that happened. You know what I mean? There's no correlation there for me. Okay. None of it. Um, so let's talk about the bag of cash that Alex gave you. Do you remember when he gave that to you? He didn't necessarily give it to me. He just a couple of days before he passed. I don't know if it was like one day or two days before he passed. He said to me, Sulema, if anything happens to me, I want you to know that there is money in a bag in the closet, and it's for you. He said, it's not much, but it's for you. Okay. I think that there must have been about probably between five and seven thousand dollars or something like that because we had reports there was some other things in there yeah and like what like there was a gun associated with the bag of money oh okay that's mm -hmm. what you're asking for you're asking for the guns but the guns were in, in, in separate bags with not not in the same bag of the not in the bag of money the bag of money was a, it's like a bag, black duffel bag type thing with a zipper okay. and then there's the, the gun the guns that he left they have their own um, their own case. case and they have you know it's like a case like a gun case mm -hmm. and then the gun goes in one thing and then they have the clips mm -hmm. and uh, so the so just so I understand the, the gun case was with the next, bag of money next but not inside the bag. I don't think so. No. And just so I'm clear, the bag of money was in a Ziploc bag inside of another bag. Yes. And the, the gun was not inside the bag with the money, it's nor was it inside the bag that the money was in. Am I saying that right? Yeah, it's a, it, it has its own. Okay. Yeah. What else was in the duffel bag? Let, let me ask you this. Was there a phone in the duffel bag? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's where they found the phone, because they took it. So when you had the, let's go back to the conversation that you had with Alex when Tammy's body is being exhumed. I knew that if I asked Lori and Chad about anything, they probably wouldn't say anything. But I thought that if they had been doing something, if they, he had done anything, Alex would probably tell me. So... That's why I pressured him. I'm like, do, would you have anything to do with this? Like, that if they assume this, this body and is he gonna find anything? Did you have anything to do with this? And he said, no. But, I mean, I don't know if that was true or not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Okay. That's why I wanted you to maybe expand a little bit on, on maybe why you thought or, or suspected Chad and Lori may have, have done something to Tammy, or that maybe Alex had, had known about something or had done something? So I remember that they were saying that um, Tammy, how 
become a zombie. In the back of my mind, here I am thinking, okay, they said the same thing about Charles, right? And then Charles ended up being shot. Refresh my memory again. What was Alex's response to your question to him? So he sat back and um, he sat back on the like in the back on, and pressed his back towards like back of the bed, the the headboard, and he goes, "No, that's it. There's no answer after that." That's what they were talking about. They were making a code word to say this is safe to talk. This is not safe to talk. Do you remember what the words were? So it was uh, pretty bird. Um, and the other one was um, not happy Bob. And that's one of the things that she would say would be, for your protection, we're not telling you where we're at. For your protection. So, so how come you would, you would, were the designated, or, or how come you were always the one who would make the calls? How come it wouldn't be Ian or, or Melanie or anybody else within the group that would call Chad Mori? I don't know. I guess it was just kind of like I just kind of take over kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe. I, there was no really a particular reason why I would. Did, there wasn't like a designation know? or anything like that. Part of the manipulation and part of that indoctrination and, and getting you to be part of this, this, you know, needing them and being you know, you know, close to them and stuff like that, was their constant um, offering you a blessing of comfort or, or offering you a, um, a blessing of something that was going to happen, so promising you something. So it was almost as if when you you get that on a constant basis all the time and then all of a sudden you don't it's almost as if you're like whoa what happened there you know what i mean all of a sudden you feel like oh my goodness i have no guidance now was chad or lori directing you to, to marry alex they were suggesting it um <coughs> during the time when you talked to Lori and Chad uh, and Melanie. Did you ever have any other phones, or did you always just have your one one phone? Mm-hmm. And the reason why I ask this is because throughout this whole investigation, there's been throw phones over here, throw phones over there. You mentioned throw phones last time uh, you and I spoke here. Did you ever have any other phones or phone numbers? No. Okay. This is the only phone I ever had. I. Wait, I did ha- I did get a phone, like I told you guys, the day that Alex died because the police took my phone and I needed to have a phone until they returned it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when we were in, uh, in Vegas, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, Alex was a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, he, my back was bugging me and uh, after you know, the trip there in the car, and he said, uh, oh, he's like, I'll just give you a massage and, you know, just fix your back. I'm like, okay. So, but for some strange reason, this is really weird, like, for some strange reason, at the time, of course, I didn't think anything about it, but, you know, now I'm, like, creeped, all creeped out about it. Um, he said that he, we needed to find a Walmart because he wanted to buy this big, huge piece of plastic to put on the bed so the oil didn't get on the bed. But it was one of those ones that you put on the floor when you Painted. when you paint. Okay. And we went to Walmart <coughs> and we got it. And you put it on the bed. 
And this is when you were in Vegas? When we were in Vegas, yeah. It was the day after we got married. So, so you put it on the bed? Yeah. And he gave you the massage, what did you, and then what and did you do with the weirdest massage? thing about it was that, and this is when it gets even weirder, because after that, I fell asleep, okay? Because I was so relaxed after the, the massage, I was so relaxed, I fell asleep, and then um, I remember waking up, I was in and out, in and out, and I could hear him talking, and I was like, who's he talking to? And I get like, trying to wake up, and finally I'm like, I made myself wake up, and I'm like, Alex, I'm like, who are you talking to? He's like, nobody. I was talking to myself. I'm like, okay. So then, um, I remember to took a bath, and uh, I said, let's, I said, let's watch a movie. And he was like, he was on his phone, I think playing his game or something. And he was like super quiet. It was totally eerie for Alex because Alex usually like, he was like joking and he would like, you would say something and he would find one way or another to make it into a joke and make it funny. And like he was always making you laugh and laughing at himself or making a joke about something. But he said nothing for the rest of the evening. Nothing. Well, that's really weird that he had you lay on plastic. So, maybe I'm just a little too crazy now because of all the stuff that's happened. But in my back of my mind, I keep thinking that who was on the phone was Chad and Lori and that that was supposed to be my last day. And he was supposed to. And it very well could have been. Did you? Did he give you anything to drink before that, or make you a drink, or, or fix you anything to eat? At the time, I had no question about it. Now I'm like. Well, why would you necess why would you necessitate a whole job class all over the bed to give me a massage? That that just doesn't make any sense. And that was right after you got married. The day after. So when you woke up from that massage, did you feel like you were way too groggy than you should have been? I was or super. I thought I'm like, oh my goodness, he's like, well, it must be a really good you know massage therapist because I am so relaxed right now like I am like so so relaxed like I felt like you know like when you get out of like the um sa the sauna you know when you get out of the sauna you're like so relaxed you could actually take a nap That's what I felt. so you didn't feel out of it no it was I just it was just relaxed very relaxed yeah like super that what was really weird though was that in and out that I had when I was laying on the bed because I was I could hear him talking and I was trying to wake up but I kept going back down and then I kept hearing him again talking and I and I couldn't discern what he was saying but I could just hear him talking and he was in the bathroom talking. Did he kind of talk to himself much? Well not really. <laughs> Not like that. Like he was actually having a conversation. Like he sounded like he was having a conversation. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I talk to myself, I'm always like, you know, saying one thing or two things. Or if I go to McDonald's for lunch, you know, yeah. Yeah, something like, something that, like that. But no, no, no see, he, point is, you know, you have this he was having a yeah. like a conversation. So it, you know, now <laughs> of course putting all this together and processing after, you know, over a year, I keep thinking that he was actually on the phone with somebody when, when he says this happened. When when you guys got married or prior to get married, did you guys talk about insurance or life insurance or, or did you add him to anything or did he add you to anything? No, that I know of. I wouldn't have had any knowledge of that, but Lori would. Again, this is a very small part of the very complicated relationship between Alex Cox and Lori Vallow Daybell, who are biological brother and sister. We're going to get more into that in the next video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.